Lovely, hello everybody. It's 12 o'clock, our new uh, weekly setup. Let's see who we've got online. So, if you are uh, joining me for the first time, uh, my name's Sarah Parkinson. I'm a children's author and illustrator, and I have written and done the pictures on two books so far in my series. I've got another one coming out later this year that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, Dragonfly Pie, which I'll be reading today. A bit of a bonus thing for you guys today. And uh, The She Foxes. Um, so today's theme is the fantastic forest. So we've got some exciting things coming up today. Um, and if you are on replay, Please just feel free to skip forward to bits that you find more that you want to get to. Uh, we're going to be covering a few things today, some exciting bits. Uh, we've got rhyming coming up. We've got, um, we're going to be colouring, we're going to be drawing a squirrel. Exciting. And we're going to be writing a forest adventure. Maybe you'll want to do some interesting little picture books today as well. Mm. Exciting. So different things that we could be doing with our books. If you want to do about nocturnal animals, Amelia, or maybe an owl in a tree. What do you think? So let's have a look. Let's say hello, hello. I'm sorry for the camera with jiggery pokery that's going on at the moment. Right, hello Marianne, hello, hello, hello Ted and um oh. Ted and Hannah, hello, hello Scarlett and Sophia, hello, Eleanor and Mila, hello guys, <gasps> Henry and George say hello, hello, oh they love trees, <gasps> trees are fantastic aren't they in the forest, so many different types, <gasps> oh let's see, um, Izzy and Emily are watching, hello from Alicia, Alessia, Beautiful name, lovely to see you. Amelia says hello, hello Amelia. Hello Molly, Rose and Ethan. Hi guys, hello. And hello from Iris and Annabelle. Hi guys, hope you're all okay. Oh goodness me, busy, busy time. Uh, grown ups, this is very important. You need to go and get your cups of tea ready so that you get your little break because don't we need it at the moment? It's getting a time now where we just need to have a bit of a chill, a bit of a relax. <laughs> Some love hearts going up there, definitely. Hello, Charlotte. Hi. How is everybody today? I feel like I've forgotten what to do. I'm a little week off. <laughs> so relaxed now. Oh, hello Zoe, hi! Oh, so lovely to see you. I'm going to take my watch off because it's weighing me down. Don't want that happening today, do we? So, um, for people that are just joining in, so my name's Sarah Parkinson, I'm a children's author and illustrator, and um, we're going to cover today quite a few interesting bits and pieces. Ooh, so... Uh, for Fantastic Forest Week, we've got um, all of our um, locations and things to think about, all the different areas. There's so much to go at with the forest, isn't there? Because there's so much in there. If you go into a forest, I mean, there might be, maybe it's just trees, but of course you might find that there's a lake or a river or a little stream. So there's all sorts of different animals that can turn up in there as well. In the trees, you've got the birds, you've got the... Um, owls, you've got squirrels, I will be drawing today, drawing our little squirrel. Um, let's have a look at the squirrel we're going to draw today. What do you think? Are you excited to have a little draw? Ooh, lots of things going on. So we'd probably best get going with our uh, with our warm-up. Let's have a little couple more hellos. Hello Amelia, hello Yusuf, lovely to see you Yusuf. Um, Amelia and Benjamin are watching and they're looking forward to the workshop. Good Amelia and Ben. Benjamin, very, very excited to have you here. Okay then, so let's get started. Now what I usually do is I'll do a little bit of a warm-up. Oh, sorry if this pings off on me. Um, we usually do a little bit of a, a warm-up. So my warm-up for you today, you might guess people that have been with me before 
there are some uh, interesting bits and pieces behind me. How many woodland things can you spot? Now I'm going to do a little bit of a look around now. I'm just going to, whilst I'm doing, whilst I'm having a little look around, you have a look and see how many woodland creatures. Now, I'll give you a clue. There's actually a bit, there's only a few different types. So there's one of something, there's two of another, there's three of another type of animal, and then there's four of another type of animal. So have a little look around and see what you can see. And whilst I'm panning around, I'll just explain. So now we've uh, changed over to having just one workshop a week now instead of two. And this week we're going to do our writing workshop with a little bonus drawer at the end. We're going to learn how to draw a squirrel. Um, and then next week we're going to do the woodland workshop. Um, for woodland, well, woodlands and forests, and um, we're going to do the uh, drawing workshop. So we'll have our drawing workshop next Thursday at 12, which you know is a little bit of a change, but I hope everybody's okay with the changes. It just spreads everything out a bit and it gives you a bit longer to work on your stories as well. So what can we see? Let's have a look. Hello, hello, Bethan. Three ladybirds. <gasps> yep, yeah, good spot, good spot. Big thumbs up there. Rosie's little girl, little boy. I presumed it was a girl, sorry. Two foxes. Oh, there might be more foxes. How many foxes can you see there? Older ones, bear with us. This is just to kind of get the, the younger ones a bit more... A bit focused. Can you see? Oh, yeah, Amelia says four foxes. Good spot. Now there's... Let's see if we can find... Can you see maybe... There's... Oh, sure everybody can see there's one two owls <laughs> and there is one let's see can you see he's hiding Whoop. there he is a little squirrel over there as well ready for later <laughs> so we've got let's have a look Perfect, Scarlett and Sophia, you win the game. <laughs> One squirrel, two owls, three ladybirds and four foxes. But you guys have all done really well. Fantastic. So that's all just to kind of make sure we're all waking up and starting to think about what our theme is. So how kind of all got our brains whirring a little bit. Let's get, get some pieces of paper and things in front of you and start having to think of some ideas. You can write down then ideas as they go along. Uh, Grown-ups, one of the other um, one of the other mums uh, told me that what they do is when um, they hear ideas coming up, that they, that they sometimes write some of them down. Um, if you want to, if, if your little one kind of wants to just kind of get into the workshop and shout ideas out, if you've got a pen and paper nearby, you can write them down whilst you're having your brew, but it doesn't matter if not. It just, it's good for them to like look back on, isn't it, when the ideas come up, because I don't know about you, but they fall out of my head as soon as I think about them. I have to, I have to keep notepads near me all the time to write down all my ideas. Oh, Amelia has brought her hedgehogs down. Oh, I wish I had a little hedgehog. Oh, fantastic. Everyone's doing fantastically well. Okay then, so I hope you don't mind that today we're reading my book for my little, for the little story inspiration. I don't usually do this, do I? But um, as my book is uh, based in the, well, based in, in woodlands, based in, it's a park by, um, by a high street, I thought it might be quite nice to read a bit of Dragonfly Pie. So let's um, all sit around and have a little, little read today. Okay, are we ready? Don't worry that the writing's all backwards, by the way, or that that's not, that's just the way that it is online, but everything will be the right way around later, don't worry. Okay. Okay. And please excuse any um, knocking that's going on in the vicinity as well. <laughs> Got a bit of work being done next door. By the edge of the lake, at the break of each day, the dragonflies buzz a noisy ballet. But the poor tired geese are desperate to snooze. Something needs to be done. There is nothing to lose. One 
mongoose raises her head. Oh, I'm looking awry. Let's bake them all into a dragonfly pie. We could round them all up in a thick hearty pastry. With apples and cherries it could be so tasty. Goodness me. However, this plan has a bit of a catch, as dragonfly dances are so hard to snatch. <laughs> this pie is going to take more work than we thought. Who's going to get all of these dragonflies caught? Oh dear. An odd looking bird swoops down overhead. Catch those dragonflies. That's easy, she said. And who might you be? The, the head goose exclaims. Don't you know I'm a grebe? The new bird explains. So accepting the challenge, the bird starts to glide, searching for places where dragonflies hide. She spots a wing flicker as it catches the light. The grebe lunges forward as she takes a big bite. Dragonfly zips out of the way in the flash while the bird hits the water with an almighty splash. Kicking her feet, the grebe picks up the pace. Launching out of the lake, she gets back to the chase. Oh, goodness me. With some ducking and diving, swerving and switching, the chase turns to a dance that is truly bewitching. Suddenly, the fly cries out in despair as the grebe grabs him during their dance in midair. Don't worry, little one, I'm calling a truce. But your noisy performance winds up that big goose. You might want to skip town or find a disguise, or you and your friends will all end up in pies. But this is our home, where our families live. Bzzz. Do you think the geese could forget and forgive? Bzz, bzz. Racking his brain for a way to bounce back. Perhaps they'll consider bzz, an alternative snack. Thankfully, the neighbours offer their aid. It has to be tasty and, of course, be homemade. Together, they plan to win everyone's favour with a sweet and spectacular that's brimming with flavour. Much later on, the mood is more mellow. The sky blends to shades of red, orange and yellow. Then a drum... Can you do a drum roll for me? A drum roll of crickets all strumming in pairs leads to a willow tree curtain where a grand voice declares. My lake ducks and gander geese, you beautiful crowd. The dragonflies are sorry for being so loud. So here at a time when you won't want to snore is quite a performance that will make you want more. Dragonfly prances while the grebe kicks her feet, both moving perfectly in time to the beat. A harmonious chorus joins in on the show. The geese feel their hearts lift as they start to let go. And as a final gesture from your friends at the lake, they unveil a crumbling velvety sweet creamy. This is my daughter's favourite page. <gasps> Yum, 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 yum. The dragonflies buzz. 
around in a flurry of fuss in, in formation to spell. Could you please forgive us? Our performances will be in the evening from now. <gasps> Consider this promise a dragonfly vow. Bzzz. The geese, without hesitation or pause, all flap their wings and honk, honk, in applause. Dancing into the night, they all laugh, swirl and sway. And even the dragonflies need to sleep in the next day. Now, so that's my book. Now, what I love doing with my books is taking inspiration from real things in nature, which really is what my, my workshops are about a lot of the time, is drawing stories out from facts and nature. And grebes in real life do actually dance on the water. How amazing is that? They tap dance on the water and use their big feet. And dragonflies make wonderful dancers too because they fly around in all different directions and they can fly backwards because they have four sets of wings, which means that they're able to do that. How amazing is that? So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, now, so that is my bit of inspiration. Start getting me thinking about the forest and start thinking about what other things might be there, like the lakes and the ground and footpaths and the different locations. Let's have a look. Um, one of us give the other person's ideas. What that lovely, yes, give each other, get those, those um, ideas written down as we go along. I'll be going into a bit more kind of the different areas. Amelia loves your story. Thank you, Nikki. Are we so a dragonfly? Yes, dragonflies are wonderful, aren't they? Oh, thank you, Rosie. Thank you so much. Oh, my granddad used to um, talk us about grebes. When I was a child, I used to go watching them. There are some in the reservoir near where I grew up. They're lovely, lovely birds, grebes. They're so interesting to look at as well. You don't tend to see many birds that look like that. And as well with the bird, with them. Um, you know how ducks, I don't know if you know this, but with different types of ducks, the boy duck looks very different from the girl duck, doesn't it? The, brown, the girl ducks tend to be kind of brown and a bit boring, and you tend to find that a lot with different types of bird life. The, bird, the, the girls are a bit more boring to look at because the boys like to show off and want to impress the girls. The girls don't need to try all that hard, <laughs> apparently, in the, bird, in the bird world. But with the grebes, they both look pretty much the same. So isn't that nice that they get to have these wonderful orange, orange feathers. Wow. Oh, I'm glad that you like the story. <laughs> Ted has just shouted, I have that book. Yay. You can buy my book on Amazon if you do want to buy my book. Um, but that's not, not what it's about today. Today it's about writing stories. So I want you to start thinking then about our Beginnings! Oh dear. So start thinking about our beginnings. So what could be at the beginning of our story? So you want to start thinking about where our story could be and what our story could be, you know, what character our story is about. Oh dear, so start thinking about what the story could be about. So what characters could you have? So think about um, the different animals that you might come across. I'm so sorry if that's distracting. Um, so we have, oh, we had a frog in our house the other night. Yeah, frogs are a great one, aren't they? Different reptiles that you can see in the forest. So what different reptiles could you have? There's, um, there's frogs. There are oh, do, 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 um, adders, you can have some adders and grass snakes in the forest sometimes and like in places where people don't tend to go, they tend to keep themselves to themselves. But you can have adders and snakes, you could have lizards. There's a common lizard that you do actually have in the UK. Um, there's newts, newts like to go in the water as well, they do a bit of swimming, you might see those in a bit in the water. Um, or a toad interesting stories could you come up from those or obviously there's the the lovely fuzzy cute things oh we've got blackbirds and uh is that jack 
Oh, I don't know what that one is. Jag oh, Jaguar. Jaguar. <laughs> a blackbird and a Jaguar. Why not? You can absolutely bring in some different characters if you want to into your forest that you might not necessarily see usually in a forest. It's up to you. It's your story. Um, so what could you have? Um, you could have, let's see, you could have, so obviously we've got our squirrel that we're going to, going to learn how to draw later. Um, badgers tend to be a bit bigger, don't they? Badgers, the black and white, lovely furry badgers. We've got foxes, like in my stories as well. I love foxes. They're beautiful. Um, you could have mice. Um, there's also different type, different other little rodents like that. So I mean, a, um, a squirrel um, is a type of rodent, but there's also um, mice and shrews and voles. So we'll get to doing the rhyming and things later. We're going to cover the what's at the moment just to see what we can um, what we can cover uh, lovely lovely um, I'm so sorry if you can hear lots of drilling um, what else could you have there's um, deer and stags so you can have those massive antlers those are made fantastic addition to your story couldn't they? what could they be doing have a think about what your story could be about the other thing you want to think about as well is where, because that could get you thinking about what could be there. So if you think about, if your, if your uh, story is in a tree and say maybe around an owl house, an owl house is in like in, in the hole of a tree, <laughs> um, and maybe there's little insects crawling around, so maybe there's some ladybirds or maybe there's some bees maybe there's a maybe it's a story in the tree about about um the different so maybe there's maybe there's noisy neighbors like maybe the wasps in a in a or bees in a hive are noisy neighbors for an owl who's trying to sleep during the day because the owls are out at night aren't they doing their doing their hunting Oh, a, ba a baby and a mummy reindeer. Yeah, you could maybe do that. Or an owl. Or there's a pigeon in your garden. Yeah, the pigeon. I mean, the pigeons get everywhere, don't they? You could have a pigeon pop up anywhere. You could have your pigeon in your story, couldn't you? Who wanders into the forest and gets lost. <gasps> oh, can we draw? Oh, Sarah, the, the, the drawing workshop's next Thursday. But today we'll be learning to draw a, we'll be learning to draw a squirrel later on. Okay, stick with me. Enjoy the workshop until then, but we'll be learning to draw. Uh, we'll be learning to draw next Thursday. Um, so, what else could we have? Um, ants or spiders or snails? All these different insects that could be in your tree. Or what else? What other areas? There's the rivers and the streams, and the fish in the rivers. There's the all, all the activity that can go on at the top, loving the reeds and in um, all the different animals that you can have. So what else could you have? So there's the frogs by the water. Um, what else could you have? Snails or spiders or, ooh, or in the bushes as well. Maybe there's some little mice hiding in there. Lots of, oh, you've done an owl. Oh, we've done an owl in uh, Magic Week. Yeah, we did draw the owls in um, Magic Week, didn't we? So. Can always look back in some of the older workshops i'll put some i'll put a little list together of um, where you can find how to draw a few things in my old workshop so you can look them up yeah so have a little think about what you can have so you just want to be thinking about for your beginning as usual we want to be thinking about our where and our who it could be maybe yourself as well maybe you make friends with uh, with an animal in the forest have a little think Okay, so then that leads us over to... So we want to start thinking about our middle. What happens to our animals in the forest? What could happen? Could they, are they not get along? Maybe, 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 maybe you're in the forest and you're in the forest and you're camping gets to night time and you see some of the more nocturnal so nocturnal means the animals that come out at night so you get lots of animals that come out at night in the in the, in the woods 
So there could be the foxes, it could be there's they go out scavenging, there's the owls that come over. Ooh. Oh, there's all sorts of interesting animals that you could have coming along. Um, what other ones could you have? Um, the hedgehogs like to, have, like to be um, up at night. What other animals could you have? Or some other interesting animals that you could have as well. So maybe it's something that happens on the, when, you're, when you're camping. Or maybe you're taking a walk through the woods and you see them. Or maybe your character... Oh, that's that's okay. We'll go. We'll, we'll, we'll be do, we'll be doing the drawing. To, we'll be doing a draw later. We'll be drawing a squirrel later on today. Don't you worry. Um, <clears throat> yes. So have a think about what be happening in your story. Okay. Have a little think. Maybe a shout out if you've got any ideas that are coming up. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, Amelia learned about nocturnal animals in year two. Mm, we'll see a brilliant one for Amelia. If you're wanting to write about nocturnal animals, maybe you can get a little book together just like this. I could show you, I'm going to do, um, post some videos on how to draw or how to put together these little books to go with your work, to go with your stories. What do you think? That'd be interesting to have. So you need to start thinking about what's going to be in your book first. But if your if your story is based on the ground, maybe it's a squirrel that's looking for nuts underground and they can't find them. Maybe some, maybe another squirrel stole them all. Maybe they think it's a squirrel, but it's actually another animal that's been stealing all the nuts. Maybe they can share at the end. Okay, so when we get to our ending, you've got to think about the problem that's in our book now. Okay, so maybe we we're talking about an owl. In a tree. So, what could our, what could happen to our owl? Let's start thinking about different ideas of what we could have. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll move on to our ending now. Okay. So, start thinking about how that that story can end as well. So, what could finish it all? What could bring it all together? You've got bit of time to work on your books this week haven't you so we're, rather than taking a week to be able to or a few days sorry to be able to get the uh, get your stories done you've got, uh, you've got um over a week so we can work it in around around school work or anything like that so start thinking about what good ending you could have to your story so if it's about nocturnal animals maybe the um maybe they all make friends and they meet up for meetings during the night maybe they all hunt together Maybe they like to go um, visiting other animals and waking them up at night. What do you think they might be doing? Okay, so start thinking about what your endings might be. Uh, oh, what have we got from Rosie? Um, it could be about a girl who goes out to the toilet at night from her tent and finds a glowing spider. Ooh. Ooh, if you found a glowing spider at night when you're going out to the toilet, goodness me. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> That's very nice of you to say, very nice teacher. Think about the different ways that you can finish your book. So as I'm sensing that we want to move on a little bit and um, have a look at some different... Maybe we want to start looking at our rhyming because I tell you what, when I get stuck on my stories and I'm not too sure about where it might want to go. I sometimes find that the rhyming actually helps me decide what my story is going to be about. Shall I show you how I do that? It's a really interesting little trick. And it actually helps and I think it always sounds really fun when the, uh, uh, when the, <laughs> it sounds really fun doesn't it when, when it all rhymes because it all goes together nicely doesn't it? Sounds really interesting. So bear with me because I've been working all night like these guys have been outside <laughs> working away on my rhyme generator. Ba, 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 ba. Now I hope you're all saying ooh and ah. 
<laughs> and start thinking. So, I'll tell you how it works. So, older ones, bear with me because this is just a way to kind of get the younger ones into um, what happens with rhyming. Oh, dearie me, I hope that you're not hearing the build as much as I am. Ooh, ah. Ooh, what's Henry saying? Henry says the beavers are building a dam that becomes a playground for the other animals, but there's a problem for the fish. <gasps> Ooh, wow. That's a fantastic idea because beavers make fantastic builders, don't they? Building their dams. There's a problem for the fish. Can they not get round to the next bit? They not get through to the next bit of their, uh, oh dearie me, the next part of their, uh, of their river. Okay, so I'll show you how my rhyme generator works. Are you ready? <laughs> Can you give us a hint of what your new book is called? Ooh, I wish I could. I wish I could. I will. I will. I will give you hints as we uh, as we move along. I'm doing more more lives and things. I promise. As I get a bit more together and I can show you little bits of the uh, of the books as well. Okay, focus. So off our rhyme generator. So I'm going to start with the end of our word, okay? So that we know what we're rhyming with, okay? So the end of our word is... Let me just make sure I'm doing everything the right way around. Hmm. is UG. So let's think about how our story could start. So I think my first word is going to be BUG. <laughs> so what we could do as an example is for our first line it could be I'm going to write it, can I put it all down here? Probably not. I'll, I'll say it out, I'll make, make a note as I go along. Meet Lara, the little ladybug. So that's like a ladybird, isn't it? Sometimes you have to use a bit of creative license. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I hope the noise isn't distracting. Okay, so... The, uh, so meet Lara the little ladybug who loves giving all of her friends a big hug. <laughs> Shall I see if I can give him a shout? Hold on. Bear with me, I'm going to see if I can get us a bit of quiet. Stay there a second. Charlie? Mm -hmm. Is there any chance that I could have the, the, the noise quiet for a minute wasn't just doing my live? Yeah, Is that okay? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. It's on until one. Sorry, guys. I might get a bit of quiet now. Ooh. Okay. Okay, it's going to be two minutes of drilling and a door open that I can't seem to shut. Uh oh. There we go. Sorry about that, guys, but hopefully two minutes of drilling and then it'll be quiet. So, <sighs> sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of uh, live, live work, hey? Okay? So, let's finish off our story. So, we've got Meet Lara the Little Ladybug who loves giving all of her friends a big hug. So in the meantime, I'm going to do two letters here. She's incredibly snug. <laughs> oh, gone off on there. Incredibly snug. Wrapping herself up in a big furry what do we think? Rug! <laughs> Do 
Can you see how when you have the beginning of it, sometimes you just need to find a few things that rhyme and then see if you can make a story out of it. Now, parents, a great one for this is uh, if you look up uh, Rhyme Zone on Google and they have absolutely tons and tons and tons of rhymes. If you type in a word, they will come up with, a, with words that rhyme and it really, really helps to find a few words that you can pick out for the kids to be able to use, okay? Should we do another one? Let's do another one. Ooh, the ladybug meter slug. Snug as a rug. Yeah, fantastic. Should we do another one? Do you like how 80s my uh, rhyme generator is, parents? I am. I'm rather enjoying it. I'm just going to have to rub off the board in a minute. Right. There we go. Oh, a bit of peace and quiet. I should have said, shouldn't I? Okay, so let's start with our next sound which is at. So what could we make to rhyme with at? My story is going to be about a bat. <laughs> oh, isn't it nice? I'm a bit quiet now. So Let's see. Meet my friend Bertie, the beaming bat. What could we have to go with bat? Maybe there's a little, what's the little rodent? Is there a little rodent? Oh, the cat sat on the mat. Brilliant, Rosie. Lady will need to slug bats wear hats. Oh, let's think of all these different rhymes. Who sat on a hat? <laughs> oh, they're really the great, aren't they? What other ones could we have? Cat. That. Pat. Sat. Oh, there's all sorts of little rhyming words that rhyme and make the same noise, aren't there? So let's see. Oh. oh, big hello from Daniel and Belinda. I'm so sorry it's not working on the on the computer. Mm. Okay, please join in later. It'd be lovely to see you. Okay, so bats wear hats. So let's have meet my friend Bertie, the beaming bat, who loves going shopping with his friend Ronnie. What do you think it is? bat accidentally spat. Ooh. Shall I say the line again? Who loves going shopping with his friend Ronnie? R -r 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 -r. <laughs> Ronnie Rat. <laughs> Yay! Good stuff. Thank you, Rosie. Oh, Rosie, tell me, tell me if there's a. Tell me your name, Rosie's little girl or little boy. Okay. So meet my friend Bertie, the beaming bat, who loves going shopping with his friend Ronnie Rat. Hmm, it doesn't matter that he's also friends with a cat. C -c 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 -c. <laughs> Let's see. I think we need to have a good finish now as they all shop together and for them that is that. <laughs> so that is a great way to start thinking of stories if you get stuck. Start making rhymes because that's all I do really. I just make up rhymes and they, that comes to get brings my story together. So maybe start thinking about different rhymes or start pick a pick a, a group of letters like that and start thinking of things that can rhyme with it. So with the shoe foxes, I've got four lines that rhyme. Let's see what other ones we can pick out of the shoe foxes. Let's start with the beginning, shall we? Because that's well, that's one. This is one of the examples where I didn't know where my story was going at the beginning, but once I actually started writing it, I knew where and found the rhymes. I knew what I was going to do. So it was three foxes strolling, as all foxes do. 
The little fox cries, oh look, something new. They climb and they clamber towards a shimmer of blue. For there in the window is a glorious shoe. And that is when I knew how I was going to do, how I was going to work with my books, where my story was going to go. Okay. So we've got our rhymes, starting to think about our rhymes. If you work on those, I can give you some help on them as well. If we pop them, I'll, I'll pop a post up later and you can pop me up some of your ideas because it sometimes takes a bit of ideas to get to thinking about all your different rhymes, doesn't it? So I'm going to uh, say goodbye to the rhyme generator. And we're going to learn how to draw a squirrel now. Let's get all that off. There we go. All clear for you. <laughs> so make sure you're all sat comfortably, all ready. I'll make sure that everyone's all on screen. Lovely. Okay. So. What we need to start with, with our squirrel. Now, we usually like to start with, let's start with, let's start with, let's start with our shape of our face. Now, you want to position your face, think about the amount of space that you've got on your piece of paper. And what you're going to need space for is a big tail and a body and a head. Feet, everything in there as well. So start thinking about where everything's going to go and hope everybody can see. Try to keep it in the middle. Okay. So we need kind of a kind of a bit of a leaf shape, okay? But it's going to have a bit of a rounded end. Are we ready? It's going to be pointing down this way. So this is where our nose is going to be. It's going to be like this. not quite so much up there. Okay, so we've got the top of it of its head and its nose which has got, it's not pointy like a leaf, it's more of a rounded kind of shape. So see how you go. <laughs> I think people are excited to be drawing the squirrel. Obviously we all love squirrels don't we? Cheeky little things. Okay, next we need to draw our eye. Now for the eye, if you put your finger in the middle of where your, your little kind of rounded leaf shape is, and it needs to be just above where your finger is. It's not right in the middle, just a bit above. I just want you to draw a good circle, hang on. Nice big circle. And then two circles on the inside for a nice shine. <laughs> and then we're also going to add a little doop for a nose, just a little one. And then a slightly bigger one for a nice smile. This is going to be looking over some nuts. Okay, you ready? Next, we're going to draw some nice ears. Now, there are actually two different types as well. There's many different types of squirrel, I suppose, but the, um, the main ones are the red and the gray. The red ones, the ones that were originally here in, uh, in England, and then the gray ones came over and started taking over. The red ones have lovely pointy ears. I'm going to do nice pointy ears for my squirrel. And they're kind of like big pointy leaves. You see? Might look a bit odd at the moment, but it'll make sense come the end. Okay. Okay. So our body's there. So think about where our body's going to be. There'll be a nice lump here. 
and we're going to draw a line that goes down the back of the neck and then up to the body and then round to the bottom. Okay, a big swoopy line. So I'll show you and you can try and do the same. You see, because he's going to be hunched over a nice nut. Okay. Next, we are going to draw a nice leg just here. Okay, so a nice round, I'd say an upside down J almost, but without the bit on top. Can you see what I mean? And draw a little bit of foot and you can either finish it off just like that or you can maybe try and draw some little claws. I'm going to draw some little claws on mine. Okay, then I'm going to draw a nice arm. So from, the, from where your leg is, just here, in between there and the, and the head, just need to draw a nice arm coming out from here. Just try and copy me and see how you do. I'm going to draw some claws. They're going to be scuttling around, go, grabbing the nice nut. Oh, we forgot the hand exerciser. Oh, guys, what am I like, hey? You give your give your fingers a good stretch. Deary me. Thank you for telling me, Sarah. Thank you. Give your fingers a good stretch. It's never too late to have a hand exercise. Stretch out those fingers. I think we always tend to forget during the writing workshop, don't we? Right, okay. So now we've got our arm. Let's draw a leg, another leg for, the, for behind. So that'll want to go here and it'll be exactly the same as this one. Just a little bit smaller and a little bit higher up. So we're going to put it just there. With some little claws, just like that. And maybe a bit of belly at the bottom there. Draw a little bit of arm behind. Okay, and then I think we need to draw a nice nut to go in there. I've not got my colours out at all for this. What am I like? Let's draw some, draw a nut in there. Now what have we forgotten? Hey, what do we usually have on a squirrel? The best bit. What is the best bit of a squirrel? We've forgotten our tail, haven't we? <laughs> So I'm going to make my tail nice and bushy and red. I might have forgotten the colours before, but I'm not making it. I'm not going to forget now. Let's make a nice red bushy tail. Make it brown or red, guys. What do we think? Shall I make it brown? Now for our tail, I'll show you the shape and then I'll show you a little trick to make it look a bit fluffier. Okay, so if you're using a pen, maybe just hang off on this one and see what I do next and see what you think. If you're using a pencil it's good to lightly do it in pencil first okay so what you can do is make it so it goes taller than even the squirrel because I love the, the like double the size aren't they nice swoopy swirl just like that and then at the bottom of the swirl come out to the bottom we've got our lovely swoopy swirly tail now, do you remember um, my bee tutorial? How we made our bee look nice and fuzzy? Could you do that perhaps with your tail? You could just do it with the edges or you could do it inside as well. I'll leave that up to you. Now the direction of the hair will be going this way. 
on the bottom of the tail because it all goes whoop. Got ourselves a lovely little squirrel there, haven't we? Little squirrel knocking. Give you a second to get some uh, get some lovely colouring in, perhaps done on your squirrels. So what else do we know about squirrels? Oh, they actually they pretend to bury nuts to throw off any other squirrels that might be watching because they all steal each other's all each other's nuts all each other's seeds and nuts oh they lose they actually lose a quarter of them to to any to other squirrels so that's if you had a hundred nuts they'd lose 25 of them to little thieving brothers and sisters or friends that are nearby in nearby trees oh what else do they like they like to they put on weight in the winter feel that feel that they do it to keep warm that's why i do it too <laughs> and they don't hibernate they just hide their squirrels and hide their squirrels hide their nuts and then dig them up from the snow and they can actually smell their food under a foot of snow which i think is really interesting isn't that exciting they actually eat their own body weight every week. That's how it feels like for me sometimes. So how are we doing today? Is everyone okay? Oh, Squirrel Nutkin does not have a tail. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Oh, Squirrel Nutkin. Will he ever learn? Hey. Oh, it's been so, so lovely to have you today. Uh, I think we're coming up nicely to our hour. Um, and I hope that you managed to get um, some lovely stories done this week. So it's going to be a little bit of a test to see how we work out with um, with this new little setup. So now with the um, themes lasting two weeks rather than just one, you've got a bit more time to work on your stories. So let's see what you can come up with. Maybe you can come up with some nice little rhymes for me. And, you can, and it can just be one little rhyme and you put it in the middle of your book and you do a little story for and do a little, um, do some pictures for me. I'll post up how we can make some interesting little books. I'll do a little video. And um, I do think that you get some really interesting little ideas. What you can do. Let's have a look. Lovely stuff. Oh, Amelia says bye for now. Lovely to see you, see you Amelia. And I hope to see you all again soon. See you next, see you next Thursday for our drawing workshop. So I will get a, a post up, parents. Um, please uh, send me in your requests. I want to see because, my goodness, there should be a lot for this one. There's like a whole host of animals and insects and all sorts that we could be drawing. So I want to find out which ones are the most popular. See which ones we want to draw. Nice cute things maybe or interesting things and we'll get lots of facts in there. Lots of interesting ideas and we'll see how you're getting on with your stories. So I will um, see you all next week. Um, please send me in your ideas, send me in your pictures. I'd love to see your pictures and um, if you would um just like to just join me then next next thursday at 12 it would be so lovely to see you um i'll ta I'll, ta I'll leave it there we're just going to leave it there and um have a wonderful wonderful day everyone have a lovely day's drawing and i will send a link of all the um different um animals that we could be um different and uh, past workshops where the different um, woodland animals are that we've had so far. So maybe we can have some different ones that we've not done before. Okay. Lovely to see you all. Oh, thank you very much, Rosie. Thank you. Say so bye-bye, everyone.